I just got a chance to interview my longtime spiritual teacher and mentor, Reverend Michael Beckwith. And I'm curious, do you see your business as a spiritual path? Just let me know below. I would love to know, is that how you see your business? And I'm curious, when the going gets tough in your business, when things get hard, because they will, right? In your personal life or your business life, do you turn back to your spiritual center as a way to navigate that? And you know, the piece that I wanna speak into is how do we begin to see our business as the opportunity to create spiritual freedom? expand, evolve, and even move toward enlightenment. So for those of you that don't know Reverend Michael Beckwith, he's a new thought minister. He has a huge congregation out of Beverly Hills, California, where he's reaching thousands of congregation members who are all gathering in honor of, you know, all paths lead to truth, that philosophy. He's also a many times best-selling author and just an incredible dude. So. He was the one that really got me through my divorce. I would turn to his teachings. I would return to his spiritual texts, to his videos, when I was gutted after going through the most painful loss of my life, you know, my best friend of 10 years. And it was that transmission that I got from him that I am one with the universe, one with the divine, and do you feel that? You know, do you feel that your business is really an expression of your connection with universal energy, spiritual energy, with God, with the divine, whatever word works for you, right? And here's the thing, we're not just peddling a factory full of widgets here. You know, we're taking what's nearest and dearest to our heart and we're putting it out in the world for people to invest in, to trade us money for. And so what you're about to hear is not just about how to make more money with a spiritual business. Michael really dives into the four bottom lines of any kind of a conscious business that you and I are running. So I'm so excited to get you this wisdom. Let's flip to Michael and I'll be right back with you to debrief afterward. Reverend Michael Beckwith, it's such an honor to be with you. Thank you so much for the divine masculine that you hold on the planet. I wanna thank you on behalf of all the women of the world who mm. can use some of that spiritual, soulful, masculine energy that you channel. And I'm curious, would you be willing to speak a few words to the women. So women are starting businesses one yes. and a half times faster than men right now, but our businesses are failing faster than men. Of all the businesses started in technology, only 5% are women, mm. and yet women all over the planet are stepping up more than ever with hope in their hearts and hunger in their soul. I'm wondering if you would speak a blessing, a message from the infinite on behalf of the women who are really helping us craft the future of the planet. Absolutely. Well, well, first of all, we want to applaud the women for, for starting. And it's not about failure. It's about starting and learning the lessons, you know, because the, uh, the, the feminine energy has been oppressed for so long that they're, they're starting behind. And so you, you don't want to look at the fact that individuals have failed. You want to look at the fact that individuals are moving forward. And in moving forward, they're learning lessons ab about the dynamic of starting business. Now, the dynamic of starting business carries, what, what they want to know is it carries at least four bottom lines. Under the masculine paradigm, the only bottom line was profit. You know, it, almost at any means necessary, even if the product was not good, low quality, it was about making a profit. Now, the feminine energy carries the, the vibration of community, and nurturing, and, and, and everybody is included. So the, the bottom lines uh, that are now beginning are, yes, profit. You have to have profit to sustain yourself, but it has to have purpose. And that purpose has to be something that is um, more divine, something that's carrying the qualities of why we're here on the planet. So there's profit and purpose, and there's people. You know, you have to have, uh, you have to, this has to be good for people and it has to be good for the planet. 
So under the, 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 the feminine paradigm, you're going to have four bottom lines. Prophet, person, uh, people, and planet. Now, if they maintain that, then they'll be supported by the emerging paradigm. So don't give up. We need the feminine energy to rise because the feminine energy that's going to hold the chalice for the next level of our unfoldment. The masculine energy carried us so far, but it, it's destroying the rainforest. It's destroying the planet and the oceans, the rivers, strip mining, um, the values of, of, of consumerism, the values of materialism, but the feminine vibration is carrying something different. So I, I applaud the starting businesses at a much more rapid pace. Do not give up. Don't give up. Yes. Don't give up. Yes. Yes. Please. Yes. Uh, personally, I'm so grateful. You know, you got me through my divorce. You got me through mm. some of the toughest times of my life and you gave me hope in men. Yes. You, know, you gave me hope in the masculine. And um, I think with this flip flop of the genders, you know, I see women working now more than ever. Right. We want everything. We can have everything, but we can't have it all at once. Mm. And um, how do we bring balance? You know, we're of course, we're about collaboration rather than competition. Yes. We're about empowerment rather than power over. We're about generosity rather than scarcity. And yet um, we don't want to keep burning ourselves out. Right. Right. Yeah, uh, burnout is uh, when, you, when we're living with anxiousness and anxiety about the future. And so, it, so we have to really, when we, when we see our vision, we have to really own the frequency of that vision as happening now. It's a, it's, it's, it's a part of spiritual practice. So that the vision is pulling us rather than us pushing for some kind of future. If we end up pushing for some kind of future, we burn ourselves out. But if we're pulled by the vision and it starts to speak to us and we embrace it in the nowness of this moment and, and, and it becomes more real to us than anything else, it'll feed us. You know, I've, I've been able to, to be on the front line of a community for now 33 years because every single day is new. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even think about 33 years, really. I'm just reminded of it. It's new, it's now, and so I go into the day new, now, new, now, new, now, and then I find out as I look back, oh my God, we've done all those things. So it's not pushing something to happen. So we go from the masculine energy is making something happen. The feminine energy is making something welcome. It's a different frequency. Oh, I love that distinction. Yeah, so it's, and so in making something welcome, we're pulled. So we don't want women or anyone to go through burnout. We want everyone to make something welcome and then be pulled by the articulation of that which we are making welcome. Thank it's necessary. You. Thank you so much. One of your students, Reverend Deborah Johnson, who has been my mentor for many years, says pain, push in and pain pushes until vision pulls. That's true. And that is the thing I, I'm so grateful that you brought to these women that when we're in that energy of vision, that when we're in the energy of the dream, there's no burnout possible. No. It's day by day. You, you, you're actually recontextualizing every single day. Now, new, now, new, now, new. And then, you know, the timeless takes over and it um, activates your immune system, sends tonic chemicals through the body temple and slows down the aging process. Mm. When you're involved in, in making something welcome rather than making something happen, you, you're able to sustain over a long period of time. I yeah. feel that. I yeah. feel that. That's been my experience. Thank you so much. It's my joy. Thank you so much. God bless your work. So as you can see, it's not just about profit, and we all knew that, right? But when we keep in mind profit and purpose and people and the planet, we get to build an enterprise, a livelihood that's a true expression of who we really are and the kind of world that we want to create. So inspiring. And you know, my question for you is, are you continuing to put your purpose first? Are you continuing to make your vision bigger than your to-do list? Remember that your tribe is waiting for you. Your people are waiting for you. They're not just waiting for someone like you. They're actually waiting for you. So keep going. We are with you every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.